Okay, here's a quick video for answering or providing some guidance on solving problem number one for the question that was posed. Uh, the theorem we're going to be using is this one uh, from a calculus book, uh, Theorem 8.41. If a differentiable function has an inverse function g, and if f prime of g of c does not equal zero, then g is differentiable at c. And this is a formula for the slopes of tangent lines to the inverse function. Before we talk a little bit more about that theorem, let's just get an idea of the points that we're talking about. Uh, what we're saying here is that there's some point in the domain of the inverse function that has a value of 10 and like to was the value that got us to that value of 10. How can we find out what this X value was in the domain of F? Well, we're really solving this equation. X cubed plus X has to give us an answer of 10. F of some number, gives us a value of 10. How do we solve this? Well, x cubed plus x minus 10 equals 0. To find an x value that makes that true, we could use uh, talk about the rational root theorem, synthetic division. But a quick inspection leads to the fact that x equals 2 is the solution. Because 2 cubed is 8. 8 plus 2 is 10, 10 minus 10 is 0. So this is the one number in the domain of f that maps to 10. So that means under the inverse function, f inverse, or in, if we want to use the same letter as this theorem up here, g, uh, g of 10 has to give us an answer of 2. Okay, so we're, we're supposed to find f inverse of 10. And according to the theorem, we can do that by putting 1 over f prime of g of 10. But what is g of 10? I put 10 into the inverse function, which I don't even know what it looks like, but I know it had to map back to 2. So this is 1 over f prime of 2. But how do I find f prime of 2? Well, f prime of x is the derivative of f, which is 3x squared plus 1. So f prime of 2 has to equal 3 times 4 is 12 plus 1 is 13. So this has to be 1 13th. That's the answer to the problem. Uh, but I'm going to share my screen, go to Desmos, and show exactly what's going on here. Uh, here I've graphed the original function, f of x equals x cubed plus x, and I've proved that the point 210 does lie on the graph. Uh, here are the derivatives of the original function. I could use the Desmos uh, function thing to get the derivative, or I can actually take the derivative of f and call it g, 3x squared plus 1. And d of 2 gives us a 13. g of 2 gives us a 13. So I'm going to turn this or close this up down. Here's a graph of the inverse function. I can do that on Desmos, even though I can't really uh, solve for y very easily. And 10, 2 is on it. Just for the heck of it, here is the line y equals x, in which serves as the mirror for a function and its inverse function. They're reflection, 
images or, or points on one graph have a function, a, a point on the inverse that's a mirror image. And I can actually kind of show that here. There is the a, a line that goes through 210, 2 comma 10 with the slope of negative 1. And it does go through 10, 2. And the, the red dotted line and the blue line are perpendicular. So that kind of shows that we've got mirror image there. And the equations of the tangent line, <clears throat> um, the tangent line to the original function is looking like this. Whoop. Uh, it has a slope of g of 2, which we saw was 13. g of 2 is 13, so the slope of this line, this blue line right here, is 13, passing through 210. So I use the point slope formula. And likewise, the equation for the tangent line at 10, 2 for the inverse function, 1 over g of 2 we've seen is uh, 1 13th. And that kind of proves that uh, the formula is working. So I'm going to actually save this link to this graph.